GPT-5 is here soon and its capabilities will most likely be equivalent to that of a senior software engineer. This means that most of you are gonna become obsolete unless you do the following things. I'm a senior software engineer and I don't believe we have a lot of time left. GPT-5 is already trained by OpenAI behind closed doors. The seed has already been planted. We have maybe one year, maximum two years left before it comes out. This means that you cannot wait for it to happen to start taking actions. You need to take actions yesterday. So the best thing that you can do is to start acting now. The first thing you need to understand is what will be the capabilities of GPT-5. Even though we don't have enough details yet, you can use rational thinking and your Codebender mindset to try to figure out what are the possibilities. You know that GPT-3 was closer to just being a coding assistant. It could write some unit tests for you, it could solve some very basic bugs. GPT-4 was more advanced though. GPT-4 could perform more advanced coding tasks and it was closer to probability capabilities of a junior developer. If we continue this logic, it means that GPT-5 will have the capabilities of a senior software engineer. Now, it doesn't mean that it's going to be autonomous yet, meaning that I don't think companies will have a GPT-5 agent that they can just deploy and it's going to replace all the software engineers in their company. That's going to happen most likely later down the line, not directly. But what it does signal is that the need for junior developers is going to decrease massively. And the other thing that most likely is going to happen is we will see an explosion of non-technical people who use AI assistants to perform coding tasks. You will have product managers at your company who, instead of asking engineers now, they're gonna be able to code some features by themselves. And if you think about the future, like five to 10 years down the line, non-technical people, non-coders will be able to manage complex software projects. Coding tasks will be done by AI agents under the supervision of a human manager. And this means that the need for programmers the way we know them today will massively decrease. So what do you do to avoid going broke as a developer? How can you future-proof your career? Well, first you need to understand what coding is and what a software engineer actually is. Is a software engineer just someone who writes code? No, of course not. A real software engineer is someone who uses code as a tool to solve problems and provide value. This is what I call a code bender. This is a real software engineer. It's fundamentally a problem solver. And this means that when coding is replaced, your mission as a problem solver, the problem is still there. This hasn't changed. What has changed is the tools that you're using. And AI, after all, is just another tool that you have at your disposal. The role of a software engineer will evolve into something that is closer to a chess master. You're going to have a chess board with pieces. And those pieces are going to be AI agents. And those AI agents are going to be specialized to have a very specific task. Some are going to be front-end focused. Some are going to be back-end focused. Others are going to be about architecture testing, maybe some are going to be about some specific frameworks. The same way as you have humans right now that have specialty, right? Like engineers, some are more front-end leaning, some are more back-end leaning, some are more about architecture. You have different types of engineers. And the role of the engineer that we know today, the one that will appear in the era of AI, is going to be that of a manager of those agents. So your goal is going to become now how to use those AI agents in the most efficient way possible to win the game, to solve the problem. That's what it's going to become. So from that perspective, you need to think a lot more about strategy, about architecture, about big picture stuff, about business even. It's what a chess master would do, right? Like a chess master thinks about strategy, about planning, about like a war plan. They think about all the different possibilities that exist, how to use the pieces that they have in the best combinations possible to win the game. And that's the skill set that you need to develop. But in parallel to that, you also need to stay up to date with AI, about the new AI technologies coming up, about new AI coding assistants, new libraries, AI agents. You need to learn about prompt engineering because prompts have a massive influence on the output of the AI. You need to realize where are the strengths of the AI and where are the weaknesses so that you can prompt it accordingly. Now, this is all nice in theory, but how do you actually build the skill set? What I recommend, the best way that I know of, is to work on AI projects. That's literally the best way. So you select a problem, a problem that you have in your life, a problem that you see in society, whatever it is, it has to be a real problem. You need to think about the solution, think about different possibilities and think about what you believe will be a good solution for this problem. Then you're going to plan the architecture of the project and how to create the best solution possible. Once you have that plan, you need to execute it. You need to code this idea that you have and you can use different AI tools, APIs, frameworks to make that happen. Once it's built, you ship it, you try to get some users, get some feedback and then iterate and improve the app. This will massively improve your ability to problem solve, to think big picture, to think in terms of systems the way we're describing it. 
I'm gonna share videos on this channel where I do exactly this, where I take different AI projects and I build them and I show you how to do it. So subscribe if you wanna see that stuff and always remember, Codebenders, AI is merely a tool for us to reach our goals. I'll see you soon.